Hello everyone, in the present video I am going to discuss with you all regarding the chest x-ray in question and answer format. Let us see question number 1. What is or are the x-rays? William Ronchen had discovered the x-rays in the year 1895 and won the Nobel Prize for the same in the year 1901. X-rays, it includes gamma rays and cosmic radiation and when x-rays are passed through our body and film is kept on the other side, it will produce a shadow which can be used for the diagnosis of different diseases. Let us see the question number 2. What are the advantages of chest x-ray? Now chest x-ray are the most commonly used modality of imaging in an emergency setup. The beauty of this investigation is it is simple and inexpensive or minimal expensive and if it is properly interpreted it can provide valuable cues and you can avoid the further unnecessary investigations like MRI, CT, etc. Question number 3. Describe the penetration of X-rays in our body. So when X-rays are passed through our body, greater the density of the structure, lower will be the penetration and this will produce a white image we call as a radio opacity. Lower the density of structure, higher will be the penetration and this will produce a dark image called radiolucency. On basis of this, different attenuation of x-rays by different tissues are having a different density and more correctly having the different atomic numbers. So here with an example you can understand the bone is a more dense tissue, so more attenuation, so it will look white in color. Soft tissues and air, less dense, less attenuation, black in color. Let us see the question number 4. What are the different views of the chest x-ray? So chest x-rays are very very are most commonly taken in a PA view and uh, it is a standard view for the x-ray. Uh, in the patient who is in ICU, patient who cannot come to the standing position, in them we take it in the AP view and the other view uh, which is taken is your lateral view. Let us see the question number 5. What is the posterior anterior view in chest x-ray? So it is a very standard view, most commonly it is taken. The front of the patient chest is kept against the film so that the x-ray beam passes from posterior to anterior. And there should be at least 6 feet or 72 inches of distance between the x-ray tube and the film. And the PA position should be checked by observing that the medial end of the clavicle will overlies the posterior end of the fourth ring. Now you can see an image of PA view chest x-ray. Here you can see both the clavicles are uh, overlying the posterior end of the fourth rib. It is not horizontal, it is oblique. And uh, you can see the field of uh, the scapula is not overlapping the field of the lungs. So these are some findings through which you can make it out. It is a PA view x-ray. Now let us see question number 6. What is the AP view in chest x-ray? So it will be taken in supine position, it is taken in very sick patient, infants and for the one who is unable to sit or stand and here you need to understand is the direction of the beam will be from anterior to posterior okay and uh, it should be taken at a distance of at least 4 feet and there will be greater magnification and the less sharpness of images because the image is taken from a short distance so uh, the heart will look enlarged okay this type of greater magnification you will see in this now let us see the image of the AP view and you can find it out some of the difference clavicles are more horizontal and so on now let us see what are the difference between this AP view and PA view so PA view is taken in standing or sitting position whereas it, uh, AP view is taken in supine position in PA view, uh, the clavicles are oblique, so it is, uh, scapula will not overlapping the lung fields because you keep both the uh, per extremity, both the uh, shoulder into the epiduction position. In AP view, the scapula will overlapping the lung fields. PA view, the clavicle is elevated. In AP view, clavicle is horizontal. In PA view, it is taken from a distance of 6 feet, so no cardiac magnification. In AP view, it is taken from 4 feet, so cardiac magnification will be seen, heart will look enlarged. Fundic air bubble is seen in PA view because the patient will be in standing or sitting position. So you can see the air on the upper part of the stomach and in AP view, the fundic air bubble is not seen. Now here with this image, you can 
compare AP view versus PA view in a chest x-ray. Now let us see the question number 8. What are the different types of radiographic densities in x-ray? So gas or air, it will look black in color, water, it will look gray in color, fat in between gas and soft tissues, mineral, calcific, that means bones, it will look white in color. Let us see the question number 9. What is cardiothoracic ratio? So cardiothoracic ratio is measured on a PA chest x-ray and is the ratio of the maximal horizontal cardiac diameter to the maximal horizontal thoracic diameter. So CT ratio is equal to CR plus CL divided by T where CR plus CL is equal to transverse cardiac diameter, T is equal to transverse thoracic diameter. Now the normal cardiothoracic ratio it should be less than 0 0.5. If it is greater than 0 0.5 it is abnormal in adult. If it is greater than 0 0.6 it is abnormal in neonate. Transverse cardiac diameter if it is greater than 15.5 centi uh, 15 point sorry lesser yeah greater than greater than 15.5 centimeters it is abnormal and on a subsequent follow up of the patient if you take the x-ray and if you found serial increase of greater than 1.5 centimeters it is considered abnormal let us see the uh, question number 10 what is the tracheal deviation in chest x-ray so in certain conditions uh, trachea will be deviated away from the disease side we call it as a push and for example you will see this in pneumothorax, ural effusion and the large mass but remember based on this criteria only you cannot diagnose the condition you need to correlate with the history examination other investigations and so on before you give a perfect diagnosis in certain conditions trachea will be deviated towards the disease side it is called as a pool so, for example, it is seen in atelectasis, pneumonectomy, pleural fibrosis, etc. Now, let us see the question number 11. What are the precautions to be taken while taking the chest x-ray? So, always stand behind the x-ray tube whenever possible. Wear a lead rubber apron. Be as far away from the x-ray tube as possible. And uh, if you are exposed to the x-ray, there may be a greater risk for induction of leukemia. So this you have to remember. Question number two, describe the steps for easy x-ray interpretation. So step one, check the name and date. Check to, uh, step two, verify the view, whether it is AP view, PA view or lateral view. Step three, quality of the film, whether it is overexposed, underexposed or adequately exposed. Step number four, rotation of the spine level of scapula, rib count, etc. Step number five, check for any abnormality in lung fields. You need to remember always you need to differentiate between the left from the right lung and the spinous process of T4 should be between the heads of the clavicle if it is not rotated. And chest x-rays are typically taken with the full inspiration and always look for the cardiac silhouette on the chest x-ray. Now the question arises here is what is Silhout sign? So our question number 13, what is Silhout sign? The Silhout sign refers to the loss of normal borders or the sharp demarcation between the thoracic structures. It is usually caused by intrathoracic radio opaque mass that touches the border of the heart or the iota. Silhout sign is very useful on localizing the lung lesions as all structures forming the cardiac silhouts are in contact with specific portion of the lung. For example, if you are not able to see the right diaphragm properly, then there might be pathology around the right lower lobe basal segment. If you are not able to see the right heart margin, then there might be a pathology around right middle lobe medial segment. Let us see the question number 4, lung pathology and diaphragm. Now if there is a unilateral diaphragm elevation, you will see most commonly in inflammatory changes in the lung or pleura, subphrenic abscess, abscess means a cavity filled up with the pus, collapse of the lung, phrenic palsy and splenomegality. If there is a bilateral elevation of a diaphragm, it may occur because of ascites or a huge abdominal tumor. Diaphragm may be pushed into a lower level because of effusion or hyperventilated lungs. Let's see the last question. Chest X-ray findings in different pulmonary conditions. So in bronchiectasis, you will see a honeycomb appearance. 
usually you will see uh, crowding and hazinage of the uh, vascular margins. In pleural effusion, you will see the obliteration of the costophrenic angle. In chronic bronchitis, you will see increase in the bronchovascular margins, hyperinflation of the chest producing a low flat diaphragm, elongation of cardiac shadow and prominence of hilar vessels and parallel ribs with the increased intercostal space. So I wish this video will add a few drop of knowledge in your present knowledge. Okay, thank you. For